Happy Halloween, folks! Halloween is my favorite holiday, so I'm definitely not going to miss out putting a themed video up, even if it's a day late. And because it's my favorite holiday, I love getting into the spirit of spookiness, so I've been reading a lot of Lovecraft and playing a lot of horror games. Games like Amnesia and Bloodborne have a lot of creepy monsters in them to be sure, but I still have a fond place in my heart for the first video game monster to truly chill me to my core, and I think a lot of N64 era kids shared the exact same experience. So you're on your quest to save Hyrule, and it involves poking around an old creepy graveyard. You find the royal crest on the ground in front of a big grave, so you jam on your ocarina like old times, and the creepy scene with the lightning place. You go explore the grave, and you're created with a room of... Skeletons? Not very E for everyone. Anyways, you kill all the keefs in the room, and unlock the door to the next room, and then it happens. You meet your first re-dead. You see, the part that creeps me out so much is that you hear them before you see them. You know something horrifying is around the corner, and knowing that is almost more scary than when you finally see them. This is another edition of Hyrule History Book, and in honor of Halloween, today we'll be talking about Redeads. So, the Redeads are actually one of the few enemies to appear in every single timeline. They appear first in Ocarina of Time in the Creation timeline, then they appear in Triforce Heroes in the Decline timeline, for the Child timeline, they appear in Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess, and in the Adult timeline, they appear in Wind Waker. Breath of the Wild doesn't have an official placement yet, but they don't appear in it at all, so it doesn't really matter. As far as a non-canon appearance, they've appeared in the Smash Bros games as a trophy in Melee in 4 and as a sticker in Brawl. They've also appeared as enemies in Hyrule Warriors and in Link's Crossbow Training. Before we get into the thick of the video, it's worth quickly touching on why we won't be mentioning anything else about the Redeads in Twilight Princess. It's because they aren't actually Redeads, they're Gibdo. It's unknown if this was an error in translation, but the Redeads we see in Twilight Princess look exactly like Gibdo, and were named Gibdo in the Japanese version, which is the game that is translated from, so we will be considering them not to be real Redeads for the purpose of this video. And if I do a video on Gibdo one day, we'll go over them in that video. The Redeads physically share general appearances across all games, with some notable differences across the individual games. In all games, the Redeads are tall, gangly, humanoid figures with a flesh-like body. The obvious comparison would be to a zombie. The earliest appearance of the Redead, in terms of both the timeline and release date, is in Ocarina of Time. The Redeads look very much like zombies, having a bony body with flesh that looks very rotten. They also wear a brown wooden mask, which is made from the wood of a coffin. In the Decline timeline in Triforce Heroes, their actual physical body looks identical to the body of their Ocarina predecessors, with the exception of the pointy ears and earrings. They also have a blue mask instead of a brown one, and they have yellow earrings. They also often only look like half a Redead, as they have the newly gained power to turn into a puddle and slink around. The Redeads in the Child timeline, appearing in Majora's Mask, are identical to the previous Redeads, which should be obvious as the game they appear in takes place immediately after Ocarina of Time. For all intents and purposes, they're the same Redead. The Redeads in the Adult timeline, appearing in Wind Waker, look the most different with blue skin and no mask. In place of the mask are black eyes that can glow red when they lock eyes on prey. They also have pointed ears and earrings, like the Redeads from the Child timeline. So what could cause the change from the original Redead in Ocarina of Time to the two offshoots? Well, let's start with the mask. They're carved from coffins, so the change from brown to blue could be easily described as a change in what kind of coffins are popular at the time. After all, we use all sorts of materials for coffins, and we have all throughout history, even nowadays. It makes total sense why it could change. As for Wind Waker's Redeads not having any masks, well, the world is flooded and how they hold funerals in general may be entirely different. With so much water, maybe they give their dead a fisherman's farewell and just let their bodies out to sea. It would certainly explain why they don't have masks, as they wouldn't use coffins. Also, Redeads in Ocarina of Time are blind, whereas the ones in Wind Waker can see, so this may be a factor also. The earrings are pretty straightforward as well. In the many, many, many years between Ocarina of Time and Triforce Heroes or Wind Waker, maybe burial rites changed and they began adorning their dead with jewelry. Or maybe whoever brought the Redeads back to life gave them earrings as a signifier, like many other enemies in the Zelda universe. Redeads are always found below the earth or deep inside temples. 
With the exception of the Triforce Heroes Redeads, they aren't very mobile, and lumber towards their enemy. Once they have their enemy in their grasp, they attack them. The Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask Redeads prefer to... Um... Later Redeads grew to have horrifying teeth and preferred to bite their opponents. The Redeads are tied together by one unifying feature, their blood-curdling scream. It may be more effective than the creepy moan in terms of giving kids nightmares. This scream is how they counter their slow, lumbering speed. Anybody who's within range to hear the scream is immediately paralyzed by fear and stops in their tracks. The Redeads use this as a chance to get closer to their enemy. Redeads are lethally weak to light and can oftentimes be immediately killed when in contact with it or at least stunned. This includes the Sun Song, which evokes powers of light and dark. They are also weak to fire and can be very quickly killed with it. One thing that isn't known is the intelligence of the Redead. They don't seem to have much going on behind those masks, and above the cognition to know to scream to immobilize their prey, they kind of just stand there. Wind Waker Redeads are even worse. They aren't blind, and they can see you perfectly fine, but if you're too far away, they just kind of stare. He's just standing there, menacingly! However, they do show one interesting behavior that could show signs of intelligence. If a Redead is killed, and other Redeads are around, they will immediately cease their attack and they will crouch around the killed Redead. The re-deaded Redead. The re-redeaded? The dead Redead? There are two possibilities. The first is that they could be grieving for their dead which is disturbingly touching in its own way, and it in itself shows at least some level of intelligence. However, the second possibility is a bit more sinister. They crouch around the corpse until it disappears, and then they get up and leave. This could signify that they are perhaps devouring the corpse of the fallen Redead, which is both horrifying and a big strike against any potential intelligence, or at least any moral consciousness. So, we know what Redeads are, we know what they look like, and we know how they act. The burning question remains, what are they here for? They obviously aren't dead Hylians just rising from the dead en masse. That job is already occupied by the Stall People family of creatures. There really aren't that many Redeads, and they seem to just be put in very specific places. They seem to be reanimated corpses meant for guarding locations. The most obvious answer is that Ganon is the one doing the resurrecting, and this is very likely the case much of the time. However, it is also very likely true that the Sheikah were resurrecting corpses as well. Think about it, there are two areas in Ocarina of Time built by the Sheikah that Link has to explore, the Shadow Temple and the bottom of the well, and both locations contain Redads mulling about, guarding locations against intruders. It doesn't make any sense for Ganondorf to put Redeads in a palace to guard the lands of truth. If he knew it was there, he obviously would have just taken it for his own, not just resurrect a few Redeads to protect it and then move on with his day. If you need further proof that the Sheikah were obviously creating Redead, take the royal tomb in Ocarina of Time into consideration. It's completely sealed. In order for Redead to have been put there by Ganondorf, he would have had to dig a hole, go down there to place the Redeads, leave, and then reseal it. And for what? To guard against a wall with some musical notes on it? Why not just destroy the wall? It doesn't make sense. But to even further prove it, let's take a look at the poem inscribed on the wall containing the sun song. The rising sun will eventually set. A newborn's life will fade. From sun to moon, moon to sun, give peaceful rest to the living dead. If direct acknowledgement of the living dead isn't enough, along with the previous facts, I don't think I can change your mind. There's actually a lot of argument and debate as to what Redeads actually are. You've seen me refer to them as flesh-rotten and zombie-like, and you've heard me make arguments using burial rites and the such as points, all of which would make it sound like it's pretty obvious that they're reanimated corpses. Even the name seems to make that case, with re-dead implying something was already dead, or dead twice. Well, it actually isn't as clear-cut as all that. There are two prevailing discussions in terms of what re-deads are actually made of. They are either reanimated corpses, or they are creatures made by magic and formed by clay. 
There is a YouTuber named Maseanala who made a fantastic video on the topic and I recommend giving it a watch if you want more information on the actual topic of clay vs flesh. However, the short version is that in Super Smash Bros. Melee and 4, the trophy description of the Redeads creates direct conflict with what is stated in the games. The Melee trophy starts the ambiguousness by stating that the Redeads were magic animated into hideous humanoid shapes. The trophy description for Smash 4 makes it pretty blatant, stating that these creatures may look like zombies, but Redeads weren't human to begin with. They appear to be clay monsters fashioned in the shape of humans. The reason we don't default immediately to the Smash Bros interpretation of the Redeads is because it conflicts directly with information that the games themselves give us. Included but not limited to direct quotes from the game and references to the living dead in the official player's guide. I could make an entire video on this debate, but many of them have already been made and I think that Maseanala's is the very best on the topic. So definitely check it out if you want to understand more about why it makes sense to ignore the trophy descriptions. Hyrule has always had its horrors and the Redead might be the most horrifying. That said, I'm really happy they were included in Triforce Heroes and Nintendo hasn't forgotten about them. Maybe we can hope to see them down the line, maybe even in Breath of the Wild DLC. Either way, thanks for watching another episode of Hyrule History, and I hope you had a spooky but re-dead free Halloween. Please subscribe if you think you'd like to see more of these, and drop a comment if there's anything specific you'd like to see an episode of Hyrule History about. Thank you.